you own a 3D printer, or any other form of CNC machine, then chances are you know what this is. This is a NEMA 17 sized stepper motor with an integrated lead screw. I use one of these on my 3D printer to move the build platform up and down in the Z-axis. But wouldn't it be great to replace the lead screw within this motor with one of your own choice? But <laughs> why would you want to do that? Well, one good reason is if you receive one of these in the mail with a slightly bent shaft on this lead screw, then that's an obvious choice. But maybe you have your own lead screw which is longer than the one inside the motor. Then you could replace the lead screw with a longer lead screw. Or maybe you have a different pitch or a different number of starts on your lead screw. That would be another great reason to replace it in this motor. In fact, the only thing that we need to be mindful of is the diameter of the lead screw itself. This one here is 8mm, so we're stuck with replacing the lead screw within this motor with another one of an 8mm diameter. Something to check before attempting to replace a lead screw like this inside a stepper motor is to ensure that the lead screw goes right through to the very end and by looking at the base we can see uh, the base of the lead screw in there and if I rotate that you can see the threads rotating as well. So that's a good indication that this entire lead screw is just one piece uh, going straight through this motor. These are the basic hand tools you're going to need to be able to transplant a lead screw out of the stepper motor. To start off with, just a basic Phillips head screwdriver, a set of multi-grips, and a set of vice grips, and also a flat blade screwdriver. We're also going to need some very strong glue. This is two-part epoxy adhesive. We'll start by removing the four Phillips head screws at the base of the stepper motor. Okay, we can now remove the screws out of the stepper motor, they just slide out. Now that the screws have been removed from the motor, we just need to give this a good whack to separate the top half from the bottom half. And I've found the best way to do that is to just knock it on something soft, like carpet. Taking a look at the parts of the stepper motor, starting with the main body, we can see the stator coils are wrapped around the stator poles. We can also see that the top of the motor has a housing inside there for a bearing, and that bearing is still attached to the uh, top of the lead screw here. And looking at the base of the motor, there is just a holder for the bearing at the base of the rotor, this one here. So we want to remove the two bearings from the lead screw first. Now if you're unable to remove the bearings by hand, this one here is a bit tight, you'll need to use that flat blade screwdriver to get in there just initially and see if you can pry it open. And we just want to just gently twist the flat blade here and move it around the bearing and twist until it starts to move away, which it is now. And there it is, it's come loose, and I can now pull it out by hand. We also have a nylon washer in there as well. Give it a twist again, we just want to move that bearing up ever so slightly with each rotation, and eventually, there it is, it'll give way, and that can slide off. And there's also a nylon washer on here as well. We want to pull that off too. All that's left to do is to remove the rotor magnets from the lead screw. Now, these rotor magnets are actually glued to the lead screw. The lead screw isn't ground down or anything exotic like that. It's just your stock standard lead screw. And that's what enables us to reuse this rotor magnet on our replacement lead screw. Before we remove the rotor magnet from the lead screw, we just need to see how much of the lead screw is actually hanging out from the base of the rotor magnet. And just using a metal ruler, we can measure approximately eight millimeters. 
So we just need to ensure that when we glue this new rotor magnet onto a new lead screw, that there is eight millimeters at the base. So this is probably the toughest part about this whole operation, removing the rotor magnet from the existing lead screw. First thing we need are our vice grips. Adjust them so the center of the vice grips are just below eight millimeters in diameter. They are going to grab onto the lead screw itself. The multi-grips are going to attach around the rotor. And then by holding the vice grips and then by rotating the multi-grips, we're gonna be able to crack the glue away from the lead screw. I also have a bit of cardboard here that I've just used a bit of uh, uh, some tape here uh, to cover the rotor magnet during this operation. I didn't do this originally, but I think it's a good idea as I don't want the, uh, the metal teeth of these multi-grips to start to strip the metal teeth of the magnetic rotor. So grab your multi-grips, get a nice strong grip around the lead screw. Use your multi-grips and attach around the rotor. And then give it a twist. Come on. It's stuck on really tight. Oh yeah, that's coming away now. So I'm now threading it off the lead screw in the direction of the thread that it wants to thread down. And that's loose enough now, I should be able to do that by hand. When it's spinning, it's coming off. There we go, look at that, magic. And just like that, it's off. As you can see, it's just the lead screw. There's nothing special about that whatsoever. You can probably see some leftover adhesive on there. Simple. So here's the rotor. I'll just show you inside. There's no thread on there. It is, it is flat inside. So it was just glued on there. And you can see the fingers on the rotor here. There's like two magnets here. And you can see the, the little fingers are out of alignment. I think this would make a great fridge magnet. A bill. A postcard. A pizza menu and the loyalty card. Here is the old lead screw. The old lead screw is about 350 millimeters in length and this is the lead screw that I'll be installing into the motor. This one is 300 millimeters in length. It's a bit shorter but it's well long enough for the purpose for my 3D printer and of course it's much straighter than the one I removed out of the stepper motor. Now before we attempt to glue the rotor magnet to the new lead screw, just make sure you've cleaned the lead screw, get rid of any grease or oil that may be on here, as we want the two-part epoxy to bond directly to the lead screw and also to the rotor. So I want to mix a couple of drops of each part of this two-part epoxy uh, together to form the actual adhesive bond that will be used to glue the lead screw and the rotor magnet together. And I like to use the blister pack that it came out of, so I've ju I just use the, uh, the inside of the blister pack here to, to mix up the two parts of the, uh, the epoxy. Uh, so all we need is like a stick or something just to mix it together uh, as we pour a few drops of each of these out. I just need a stick. Where am I gonna get a stick from? Remove the lid from this two-part epoxy. Make sure you don't make a bit of a mess. Pour a couple of drops out into the blister pack. One on that side, one on that side, one again on the other side, and one last one on that side. Perfect. Just mix this up now. Okay. Grab our rotor, grab some glue. Now we want the base of the rotor to be eight millimeters from the base of the lead screw. So we'll apply the glue 
uh, at least eight millimeters up from its base. So about here, evenly spread that around the lead screw. Grab our lead screw and the rotor magnet, slide that on. Okay, eight millimeters from where it should be. It's a bit far, move that back a bit. And just wipe off any excess glue that you can see with the tissue. Now we just need to let this dry, but just looking at the back of the adhesive packet, just want to see how long it'll take to dry. Drying, do not strain bot until practical strength is achieved in 45 minutes, okay? Maximum strength is achieved after 24 hours. 24 hours? After the glue has dried, the magnet is now rock solid on this new lead screw. Last thing to do is reassemble this motor. Install the nylon washer on the lead first, followed by the bearing. Push that on. Followed by the other side, nylon washer first. And bearing. Bit of a tight fit, but get it on there. And there it is, reassembled. We'll grab the main motor body, we'll insert the lead screw uh, through the top of the motor, like that, push it through, hold it straight, line up the rotor magnet into the stator, lock it in, grab the base. Where the notch is is where the, the cables come out, so on this side, and with this particular motor, there's one of these plastic clip things. So make sure you slide that back on first as well, on top of there like that. Then we'll grab this part, slide that over the top. And make sure that goes on. Oh, there it is. And lastly, reattach the screws to the base of the motor. And that's it, we've successfully switched over the lead screw inside this stepper motor. Now don't forget you can use any length of lead screw that you can find online. Not only that, you can install the lead screw right through the base of the motor. So you can have the actual cam of the motor somewhere in the center of the lead screw and then use the lead screw out of both ends of the motor to drive your axis. Alternatively, rather than using a threaded rod coming out of the motor at all, you could use a smooth rod. What application would use a smooth rod coming directly out of the motor?